Hi, my name is Mok Sharma. I'm the Head of Global Development Operations at Bristol Myers Squibb. I'm very interested in rare disease. I work with quite rare indications at BMS, but also I worked for seven years in Alexian, a rare disease company in the US. I guess two things really. One is that uh, I'm passionately interested in rare disease. The second thing, of course, is that uh, my nationality or my national origins give me a kind of great interest in also bringing rare diseases to Indian patients. I think it's also a business priority, 1.4 billion patients potentially in India, obviously not all suffering from rare disease, thankfully, but how do we better serve uh, that population of the world, I think is of critical interest to most organizations, including my own. So Bristol Myers Squibb is of course a US based company, but uh, operates in many countries. We're actually uh, significantly expanding our presence in India from preclinical research through clinical trials, through commercial access, including thousands of uh, Indian nationals working on behalf of our clinical trials. And so this question of access for those patients and their families is of critical importance to us. I think people often talk about uh, the challenges or the problems or the difficulties of working in India. But for me, I think there's not a, it's a little bit like uh, the weather. There isn't good weather or bad weather. There's just having the right clothes to wear. And I see the same thing working in India or other countries. It's a case of, are there patients there? And if there are, then how do we serve them? And sometimes we need to adapt how we serve those patients or access those patients or treat those patients or offer commercial solutions to those patients, depending on the environment that we operate in. I find that one of the interesting things about uh, working in India is uh, when people ask me about the infrastructure, well, it's a, a yes and no question. Because what I think is that uh, actually India is a very heterogeneous country with uh, I think 239 US dollar billionaires at the same time probably 400 million patients with very minimal health care and so I think when you work with the top centers in India they are truly world-class in terms of capabilities training funding etc if you're working in the village in the jungle then it's quite quite different so I think the key thing is to find collaborators both at the institutional and at the individual level, at the physician level and the study coordinator level, who truly can act as advocates and magnets and also competent centers of competency to treat rare disease patients. Working in rare disease, one of the most critical areas is really to be in the shoes of the patient. And quite often the inroad to understand true patient journey is through advocacy groups. Now, actually in the US, a lot of European countries, the role of advocacy and the influence of advocacy and the partnership with advocacy is quite well established, but it's often less well established in Southeast Asia, Latin America, India perhaps. I think it's a critical area where we need to improve the work that we do with advocates to understand maybe the differential needs of Indian rare disease patients and how can we put into place infrastructure or protocols that work for those patients which maybe slightly differ from those of US patients. I don't think there's a, a fundamental difference in terms of how we work with patients and how we work with advocacy groups on behalf of patients to understand how do we help patients. Uh, what I do think is there's a, a level of maturity probably which doesn't necessarily exist in uh, India yet for all rare diseases in the same way perhaps that it does exist uh, in the US but I don't think there's a fundamental major difference in terms of the approach. I think uh, genomics are uh, often fundamental actually not just to uh, understanding rare disease but to the pathophysiology of rare disease maybe 70% I don't know if the number's true of rare diseases have some kind of genetic or mutational origin. Uh, one of the things that's quite interesting is that uh, as we, as the availability of uh, genetic mapping at the individual level becomes more and more widespread, is that we discover actually little micro genetic uh, populations 
which we didn't know of. So because of historical migrations, because of marriage patterns and other things, or the cultural aspects kind of thing, that Middle East we have this population of patients, in Kerala we have this population of patients, or even in smaller geographic locations. But I think it's quite fundamental to treating and diagnosing rare disease. Without that, we're left with kind of more traditional things like familial incidents, parents or the first child, and therefore there's a high likelihood that we should look at the second and third children to see whether they also have it. But more and more, I think, we'll be able to micro-target where these patients could be and should be. Well, I think uh, it's very difficult to comment on artificial intelligence and uh, large language models just because whatever you say by next week it's out of date. I think uh, what I do see is that one of the key challenges for a rare disease patient is actually getting to a diagnosis. A oft quoted figure is it takes maybe seven years for a rare disease patient to meet up with the right physician who truly understands the diagnosis to make and actually sometimes patients are never treated for the right disease, they're treated for adjacent diseases or even incorrectly treated because they never got to a physician who actually seen that disease. And I think the ability for us to work with artificial intelligent large language models to bring rare disease experience to inexperienced physicians is going to be critical to increase the accurate and timely diagnosis of patients with rare diseases. I think what's uh, interested me, actually uh, engaged me with Indo-US Rare is the ability to bring together in a collegial setting where we have one objective which is rare disease patients, specifically rare disease patients in India and how can we help them but to really bring together all kinds of stakeholders from, of course, industry, but both small, very small sometimes, and very large, in terms of uh, regulators, FDA, etc., in terms of patient advocacy organizations, non-governmental organizations, charitable organizations, all coming together really to talk about one thing, which is how can we better serve rare disease patients in India? I think one of the good things is that uh, more and more in both governments and health authorities realize the need to develop or adapt or right size, I guess, the regulatory approaches to serve rare disease patients precisely because the patients are rare, we can't find so many of them. The evidence that we bring to bear may be not the same as obviously as in the cardiovascular study. At the same time, the, med the unmet medical need is extremely high and so we have to take an appropriate balance. I think where this still work is probably to better harmonize the different views across different countries, different regions, because the more conflicting or sometimes overlapping demands we have, the more difficult it is to efficiently design programs to try and get new treatments to rare disease patients as quickly as possible. I think one of the uh, key challenges in rare disease is obviously how do we get access to patients assuming that our clinical trials work out well and that we get an approved therapy. Well, okay, we can get approval in the US, then we can get approval probably in Western Europe, but then how do we get approval in India or other territories where we may have conducted trials or we may not have conducted clinical trials? So that's the next hurdle. But actually for rare disease, often a bigger hurdle is around pricing, reimbursement, access from a, a commercial perspective and how do we have uh, a business case which makes sense from a patient perspective, from a country perspective and also from a company perspective. Now, both little companies and large companies struggle with that question and we develop uh, all kinds of strategies for, let's say, developed economies or low and middle income countries, but I think there's still a lot of work to do there to truly work out how we can get to equitable access for major portions of the world's population. But at the same time, we have to be true also, of course, to our shareholders in terms of there has to be a commercial return somehow for the investments that we make so we can invest in the next portfolio of products for the next patients. Actually, manufacturing is one of the uh, key areas 
that need to be challenged and solved. And it's quite different if we're dealing with small molecules because they're relatively simple to produce. We can manufacture them locally in many cases. I think. Uh, large molecules, proteins, a little bit more difficult, more complicated, more technology. But I think today probably the true challenge for rare disease is uh, cell and gene therapy. Often these treatments can be curative. So perhaps a majority of rare diseases have some kind of genetic basis for their pathophysiology and so it's often of critical importance to treatment. But at the moment the manufacturing, if we can call it that, uh, of cell and gene therapies is at the artisanal level. As to the individual patient, we aphorese the patients, we take their cells, we treat them with electroviral vectors, and we give it back to the patients, but it's truly artisanal. And I think the next evolution has to be the industrialization, the commoditization, the standardization of cell and gene therapy. So we go somehow, and I'm not an expert in this, but I'm just, it's an aspiration, from the uh, individual patient by patient to actually having a product called a cell therapy. I just want to say that uh, it's my first time at uh, Indo-US Rare Disease Bridging and I was really impressed actually at the diversity of views, the diversity of opinions, but actually the commonality of purpose. I found it a really worthwhile time, a way to spend my day. Thanks a lot.